Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Faith and Fandom podcast. Today, I am joined by Matthew Coker. Did I say that right? Cool. Yep. I don't know if I've actually said your name out loud before. Um, oh, if you, if you could only know the amount of uh, debate Mo and I have had over how to pronounce your last name for the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> in, so, fact, in fact, we, we said it wrong for like a couple months, and then we thought we had it right for about a year. And then just a few months ago, we're like, oh, gosh, did you hear that when he said it? I never heard that before. It's the, the we were, we've been saying Mira, but it's Mira, Mirai, Mirai, Mirai. Yeah. And every, everything, every time we heard it, we thought we heard Mira. So that's what we've been saying. Every time we introduce you in the middle of the show, and here's Faith and Phantom 180 with Hector Mira. And <laughs> now we're like, Mirai, dang it. Well, you know. <laughs> My my story with that is uh my dad my dad's Puerto Rican my mom is as deep south as like an old chicken drumstick I mean that's where we're at <laughs> and um so my dad was gone most of my childhood so I always my mom always just said Murray mm. and that's how I said it at the very beginning when and we so, were first starting out yeah so my mom would say Murray and then somewhere I don't know what happened somewhere in high school I gravitated towards my Ray. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how that happened, but that's, that's by high school. That's what I had landed on. Wow. And so I was Hector Myre. And then, um, at my wedding rehearsal, uh, the pastor went through the whole wedding rehearsal. My family from Puerto Rico was in the room <laughs> and he said, I now pronounce you Mr. And Mrs. Hector Myre, my saucy grandma from Puerto Rico, who was about 60 ish at that time, maybe 65 at that time, like jumped to her feet, slammed the table. And I don't want to slam the table for the microphone's sake. She's like, no, your name is Mirai. And I'm like, oh snap, sorry, grandma. And, <laughs> and um, so like, that's like, okay, grandma says Mirai. You know, I don't, I don't try and roll the R cause I'm not that deep, but um, like <laughs> he's got an R roll with it and everything. So that's generally where, where they're on the R roll. And, um, <laughs> I don't feel as bad now. <laughs> no, I don't even know how to say my own name. And well, yeah, the, the only oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's the the only thing worse than that is, and this is I know this is not what anybody's here for, but um, <laughs> I remember being maybe second grade, and uh, I was in like elementary school library, and I had checked a book out improperly or I had done something wrong and whatever it was wrong was enough to really annoy the librarian. <laughs> and she got really angry about it. And she came to show me, I see that you're the last one to check out this book and look at the damage done and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and she paused and she looked, I'm sorry, Hector obviously somebody else wrote your name in here because your last name spelled wrong. And I know you wouldn't misspell your own name. And, and she just walked away and I'm like, oh, I totally did that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just let it roll, but it's just like, can't spell it. Can't say it, you know, uh, it's, it's whatever. Well, yeah. The only alternate pronunciation for my name is Cocker and I hate it. And that's, that's plagued me my entire childhood because kids are cruel. Yes. <laughs> kids are cruel and that definitely is like the best one like and i think was why i liked my ray is like i had these girls in like high school and early college that would call me my ray of sunshine and i'm, like, I'm like bro that's super dope i like that <laughs> you keep calling me that <laughs> then like my name changes i'm like oh well it's not mad it doesn't matter anymore anyway um <laughs> but like i remember being a camp counselor and getting email or getting like snail mail at camp from people like hello my ray of sunshine i'm like <laughs> um but you know so that's where it's all that total name tangent um so <laughs> on a short <laughs> version because you know this is very we made know, it through we made it through the name introduction we made it through the names got. um tell the people who you are and what you do like on a whatever vague level you want to give all right uh i i typically go by the name radio matt uh because i am the station manager for LTN Radio, Love Thy Nerds, uh, official exclusive radio 
channel uh, online at uh, ltnonair.com. We stream 24-7. Uh, I, I basically do 90% of the work <laughs> for the station. Uh, you know, I, I, I curate all the music. I uh, schedule everything that goes in. We do put in a whole bunch of Love Thy Nerd exclusive like content. Like we get to usually with most of the podcasts and stuff for the show, we, uh, for, the, for the network, we get to air those first on LTN Radio. Um, and then I also get to host a morning show with uh, my longtime uh, co-host and buddy, uh, Megan Mo Oaks, uh, who's been with me for multiple years uh, recording, thousand, well, at least hundreds. I think we're maybe approaching a thousand hours worth of content together now. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, my main, that's my main gig. Uh, it's not my paying gig, but it's my main gig. It's, it's my... my uh, my what's the word i'm looking for it's what i want to do i guess <laughs> with the rest okay. of my life it's it's what i'd be happy doing for the rest of my life if only i eventually i get paid for it <laughs> I, I i've known those things and yeah. um what, what what's your actual pay gig like what's your day job i am a media director uh at a at my local church uh it's actually the church i've been going to since i was 14 14 years old uh so over over 20 years now uh been going to this church uh so i'm the media director it's actually a position i convinced them to create uh because we needed somebody in charge of everything because it just everything looked awful it was a hodgepodge of garbage for years no nothing meshed logos were non-existent uh it was bad so i'm like hey look this is what i can do and i can make everything look beautiful if you pay me this and create this job for me and so i wrote my own job description set my own pay and they're like sure and they gave it to me and uh been doing that for over 10 years now and uh i'm too valuable to the church to fire essentially that's what <laughs> i've made myself had if i've been i've been home with COVID for the last two weeks, last two Sundays specifically. And it's like, when I'm gone, the church is on fire, not in a good way, like burning <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> they're begging me to come back. Every time I'm gone, they're like, see, whenever this happens, we realize just how much we don't know how to do. And that's probably a bit on me for not like teaching everybody, but at the same time, you know, it's like Joe Rogan in, in news radio. I'm the only one that knows where this goes. You can't fire me. So <clears throat> that's what I do. Which also easily lends to the passion project of the radio station and everything with it. Um, my mm. media director effectively quit today. Ooh. And um, he does a great job. He's done a, he's done a wonderful job, but um, he's been, he was one of the launch members of this church. Mm. and so he's been through 10 years of it planted two campuses in two different locations and he's been he's been through a lot and so he's uh he stepped out like literally he accepted another church position yesterday so i'm like i woke up to the email of hey uh he's gone so uh, uh get ready yeah Ooh. so i uh, can imagine i can imagine the uh the slight terror that must well, be. <laughs> well, that's going to fall on me now. So yeah. <laughs> just by default, because we were supposed to have been a team, but he didn't share a will. Mm, so I'm, I'm that guy too. I'm, <laughs> I, I really need to delegate some work. And... He, he, cause he was, he's really good with graphics, but he's not great with words. Mm. And so the deal was supposed to be, you know, you say, Hector, you plan, we're doing this and saying this, and you make the graphic and then you guys come together and work it out. And then it'd be like, I'd be in the middle of like driving across country on summer vacation. I'm like, Oh my gosh, we can't say that. Ah, <laughs> and like, <laughs> like literally there was, I, I had a moment about a year and a half ago where I was literally oh. in the desert in New Mexico and on vacation with my family and like saw my wife's phone out of the corner of my eye as she scrolled past the post from my church. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> like, <laughs> and then we were pulled over at a rundown hotel outside of Route 66, like, and I'm like <laughs> trying to damage control. And I'm like, so my life's going to get real interesting. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, every, t- like, I literally like have twitches of, you know, just social media damage control. So we're, we're going to be doing that and I'm going to be making a lot more stuff coming up. But yep, uh, I, I give it, man, <sighs> it's terrifying, especially running social media for a church. It's, it's just, there's a, there's, there's a certain line you can't cross. And I don't think that's been any more apparent than this last year with COVID-19 and everything. Just like, you got to really be on your tiptoes with how much you're going to say and <laughs> what well, you can say. Uh, and, and, and like 2020 le- legit was like this testing ground for everything because mm-hmm. like what's appropriate to say, what's not appropriate to say um, and dealing a lot of stuff like with a, uh, you know, the Sunday with the blackout Sunday, like our, not, like not the blackout Sunday, but the, the day where all the social media profiles blacked out um, for like a, Oh, I don't remember what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. With um, that, that day, um, you know, literally we, our church is three campuses with three different pastors, but we're one church. So yeah. everything's supposed to be like uniform. Yeah. And even just getting all of us to agree on everything was like, where are we at? And then like, you know, it's, it was just this crazy mix of like, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. And we, we are deep South where um, if you say, you know, you and I were talking about this before we hit record that, you know, there are people that if you, if you say wear a mask, the church, you don't have faith. And yeah. so like we literally, you know, if we mentioned that there were people like, y'all don't trust Jesus. And I'm just like, or, or y'all don't, y'all hate Jesus because you're all not requiring masks. And it's just like, I don't know what we're doing anymore. Right. Um, Do you hate Jesus or you hate your, uh, your fellow man, your brother and sister? Uh, yeah. Either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's just and the thing. People will take social media however they want without context. Absolutely. And, it's awful. It's awful. Well, and you deal with this a lot just because like outside of just the radio stuff in your day job, you also uh, do back row Baptist church as a the Facebook group. Yeah. The yeah, Facebook yeah. group. So tell, mm-hmm. tell us about that too. Uh, you know, I mean, back in, okay. There's a long story. I'm going to condense it. Uh, <laughs> cause I, cause I want to know about like the start of the radio with the name yeah. and everything as well. So seven, so, se- seven or eight years ago, um, I was, this was early in the, the media director position. Maybe it might've been longer than that. It was close to the beginning of that. Uh, I was bored uh, during like, it was like an Awana event that I had to run sound for at my church. And so I'm like, I'm going to create a Twitter account. I'm going to create, like, I saw like church curmudgeon and stuff on there. And I'm like, this is funny. I'm going to create a church Twitter account. And I created Back Row Baptist, at Back Row Baptist. And, uh, within the first two hours, I actually got a shout out from church curmudgeon, which he had like multi thousands of followers at that point. He's, I think he's in the millions now. I don't remember. But anyway, suddenly this two hour old account had several thousand followers within 24 hours. And so I'm like, holy crap. Okay, well, I'm doing this now. And so for, for several years, I ran like this anonymous, uh, just Christian church joke humor account. And I had a blast doing it. And uh, eventually, eventually God put it on my heart. as like, look, you got 14,000 people following this account. That's a platform. And uh, you have a story and a testimony that I have put you through and brought you out the other side of. And uh, 14,000 people, I'm sure a few of those are going to listen to it. So, like, so I fought that for months. And eventually I gave in. I shared my testimony, shared everything, revealed who I was and all that. And, and uh, most people stayed. Not a whole lot of people you know, engaged with that aspect. They just wanted the funny jokes and that was fine. Um, but we kind of separated into two different things. We did the humor, we did the healing. We did, you know, we, we did like a recovery focus section and we did a, a uh, just laugh to get through the pain kind of section uh, of our ministry. And that grew into like a blog and then eventually skipping, 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 it grew into a uh, podcast called the Back Row Baptist Podcast, which got 
uh, fairly popular pretty quickly just because of that uh, outlet. I think we got up to 22, 23,000 followers on Twitter at one point at our top. Uh, and uh, as we were doing the podcast, mm. we we started uh, reaching out to independent Christian artists, uh, independent bands and rap artists and stuff that, that you don't typically hear. We're like, hey, we need like breaks. And so we want to feature your music in our breaks. And uh, we did that for, we, we did, I think, 125 episodes. And uh, at least 115 of those had an, a, a different Christian artist. And by that point, I'm like, man, I've got, and that was just all that we had played. We had hundreds of tracks submitted to us. I'm like, I've got so much independent Christian music right here. We could start our own radio station. And so I looked into it and did a little more research and found a cool, you know, website that would help you build your own online radio station. It was very easy, very intuitive, not that much money, uh, took care of all the licensing fees and all that. But then I realized, oh, most radio stations have like two to 3,000 songs in rotation. So they don't just replay ad nauseum. Uh, so we're like, well, let's just open it up. This is going to pay for our licensing. Let's just do a Christian radio station like we've always wanted. You know, not just, you know, I'm not, I don't want to bash on Caleb. We, we pull jokes on Caleb every now and then, but I actually, you know, for the most part, really that was appreciate legit that going to be my next question. Why yeah. do you hate Caleb? <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate their ministry. And there was even a, a long season in my life where they were very beneficial. And I don't know if this is still the case, but one of my favorite things about their ministry is that at least at one point, they made it a goal to put a trans transistor transmitter, whatever, uh, near every single prison in America to make sure that anybody in there could listen to it uh, and get that kind of, you know, hope in their soul. Uh, so that was a, that was a, that's my favorite part, I think, of their, their ministry. Uh, I hope it's still active. But anyway, all that aside, Caleb is great for people who that's the audience for it. You know, it's, it's, it's really gotten to be one sound and they had air one radio for such a long time, which gave you a little bit more rock and a little, little bit more mix into it. And, and then they flipping flipped it, man. And now it's just worship. It's the same thing, except even more just <laughs> focused on one thing. I was so mad when they did that. Um, but anyway, we, there was a station growing up here in New Mexico that used to be big and it was called a m88 massive radio and they focused on christian rock christian rap christian indie stuff that you don't hear all the time some of the odd stuff electronica all this kind of stuff and uh they've they've they're now i think star 88 and they've also kind of fallen more into the just the ccm music with just a hint every now and then of something else and just, it made me sad so i'm like we're let's make the station we want Let's put Christian rock, rap, and pop, and indie in the forefront. We had a heavy indie mix to begin with. I think our launch day, we had 25% independent artists. And uh, we transitioned the podcast to a four-day-a-week morning show, uh, which quadrupled our output <laughs> and recording time um, and all of that. But we still wanted like a humor center. We still wanted some way to connect with the people that have been following Back Row Baptist for such a long time. And then, you know, bring more people into the fold and, you know, get content from them as well for the shows. And so we started up, uh, I think it was originally called Side Hugs. That was our original title for the Facebook group, Side Hugs. And uh, we eventually closed down the Twitter account for Back Row Baptist uh, and just basically moved all our human humor resources over there. So it became just this, this, uh, meme and joke Christian sharing group called Back Row Baptist Church. And uh, our goal is to make it different from all the other ones. And I'm getting in a bit hot water just right now because of all the garbage going on with social media, uh, censorship and all that kind of stuff. But we lay out the rules of, dude, we want to have fun here. We don't want you to debate and be grumpy and be turds in the, in the comment section. Our first, uh, our first command, we have four commandments, four back row commandments. Those are our rules. And the first one is thou shalt not be a turd. We just don't want you to come in here and pick apart everything and debate doctrine and, and 
debate politics and get grumpy. We just want to come here and laugh. And if, if you find something you don't like, just scroll to the next one because you laugh at the next one. And let's just be nice and uh, friendly. And uh, I think we're, we just hit 8,000 members on that because we're very persnickety. We, you, have to, you have to answer the question. You got to prove you have a good sense of humor and we'll kick you out. I think we reject just about the same amount of people as we accept into the group. Uh, simply because we can tell when they're just grumps, just <laughs> just nasty people <laughs> that are gonna get all up in our business about it. Does the um, does the smaller number like discourage you at all? Like going from like the bigger numbers on the twenty two thousand? No, actually, you know what we did? We didn't close down Backer Baptist. We transitioned that to the radio station account, so we still have a a decent following uh, on at LTN on air over at Twitter because it started there. But no, not really, because frankly, if we had, uh, if we had twenty-two thousand people in that Facebook group, I'd kill myself. It's, it's, it's hard to keep up with the eight thousand that we have now, even with the moderators that I have. Um, but no, what's good about it, uh, and it's the same thing that I like about like Love Thy Nerds online community, is that the vast majority of the people in the group are active. Like they're, they're, they're there every day. They're commenting, they're liking, they're sharing their own stuff as opposed to Twitter, which over the years, because there's been so much fall away from people either just, yeah, I'm not going to do it anymore, but not deleting their account. So they're still following us, but they're not interacting with anything. You know, there's, there's not as much interaction on Twitter and there never was as much as we have right now in the Facebook community. So I enjoy the Facebook community far more and I'm no, not discouraged at all by the drop. <clears throat> so outside of just that stuff, I know you've done the radio station and I know you have the Facebook group. You've also put out like merch and games and stuff. For a while. Um, we, we get into that every now and then. Um, the first thing I think we ever came out with was a, a collection of some of my best uh, tweets, jokes. Uh, it's uh books i think the book's still on amazon please don't side hug me the best of back row baptist uh that was that was fun to put together i have a whole i still have a whole nother book's worth of content that i might put together one day um but yeah we 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 came out with merch we originally we got connected with uh, odg apparel uh and put out some merch we put out the shirts that had the thou shall not be a turd stuff and some other back row radio specific stuff uh, but because of COVID-19 and the hit of everything, they basically had to stop their collaborations with everybody. Uh, and so that fizzled out. Um, but yeah, the big thing, I guess the coolest thing in my opinion, it wasn't the biggest thing because we didn't really sell a whole lot. But the coolest thing and probably the funnest project that we had done outside of the normal uh, route is the Card games is what we made, essentially. We made one semi-board game, but uh, the card games were the big deal. We did a game called Judge Not, which is our bestseller and has several, uh, like, extensions. Uh, what are they called? Expansions, sorry. Yeah. Expansions. Uh, I have it around here somewhere, actually. I don't know where I put it now. Oh, here it is. Uh, Judge Not. A Christian game of specs and planks. Uh, it's essentially a a uh, game where you you have a whole bunch of offenses. Let's see, you read an offense. Who's secretly writing a new Christian roman Amish Amish romance novel? And so it's a group game. You play with people that you know, and you all kind of judge. You're the jury, and you all pick uh, who in your group is most likely to have done this thing. And uh, I won't get into the whole whole uh, rule set here because it's kind of complicated to begin with. But yeah, we've got a whole bunch of Christian cliches here. Who's the who's spending most of their paycheck at Hobby Lobby? Uh, we have some spicy ones too. Let's see. Who's rushing to do five days worth of Bible study worksheets the day of the next meeting? You ever done that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Who's That's going me. to the church business meeting just because they like to argue about dumb stuff? Yeah. Who's stuff the like one that. writing the sermon they're about to pitch like <laughs> five minutes before you do it? Yeah. I've, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. 
Here's one that was inspired by Bubba. Uh, Bubba Stalkup, our friend over at Love Thy Nerd. Who's late to a job interview but still able to get the job? And that's him right there. He can do that. This dude, he was, there was a movie shot in our town. And he, he managed to be the first person on screen in this movie. And he wasn't an actor. I don't know. I don't know how he did it. He inspires me. He talks his way into a lot of cool stuff. But anyway, we did this. Had a lot of, had a lot of fun putting this stuff together. And uh, sold a, a decent amount of copies of this game and uh, some of the expansions. Uh, did one called Backrow Baptist, which was more of a classic like Bible game where we had uh, Bible trivia. It was like a board game kind of set up, but we had Bible trivia. Uh, and then we added some, some more fun cards like uh, Joe Lost Senior Fortune Cookie cards, uh, you know, um, who said it kind of stuff, you know, all the, all this extra stuff. And then we, the latest one that we came out with, which unfortunately we just didn't get traction on, but we were very proud of was called church flicks. And it was creating a better Christian movie. Uh, and essentially it's, it, it plays very similar to <laughs> plays very similar to uh, cards against humanity, except instead of like a, a scenario with a blank to fill in, what you have is a, a short scene from a movie uh, with dialogue. And then the last line is the line that you're filling in. And then all the other cards have lines of dialogue. And so you're playing the funniest line of dialogue to end that scene. Uh, we were proud of it. And we have, we, I, I don't know. I might try and push it again in the future. I don't know. We, we had a whole bunch of ideas for expansion packs and that as well. But it's, it's so time consuming. It really is. <laughs> I was going to ask because so I know how time consuming and frustrating it is just to put out a book. So like a board game to me just seems like yeah, ridiculous. It was, a, it was a monster. It took me the better part of two years to get that first version of church flicks ready to go. It was, it just took so all my time. All the board games together. How much time do you think you put in? All of them together. <sighs> Fifty, sixty hours, maybe. I mean, not okay. not terribly, not terribly a lot. But when it comes to my schedule, just like I don't have that, I don't have an extra hour in the week <laughs> to devote to it. Let alone trying to find that. So that's why it took me over a year. Because I'm saying like, maybe I could get an hour in a week, kind of thing, uh, to get this stuff done. Um, but you know, I say that that's really just designing it now that i think about it because i also had to like write all that content to come up with those well the big one was the scripts and stuff for that so no i take that back it was much longer than that i was about to say dude that's that's a lot of work and a lot of individual cards and production yeah production was easy because we use the game crafter and so they really build everything for you okay uh so that was nice and canva we use canva for all our designs and that was easy I mean, uh, I love Canva's a Canva. godsend. Canva's oh. a godsend, man. I, I'm milking everything <laughs> I can out of the free version of it before mm. I start paying. I went premium, dude. I'm, I ain't looking back. I ain't looking back. It's great. I did. I did somebody's design for a like a business while I was watching like TV, or no, just in load screens on a video while I was doing load screens. So I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> but now that I'm actually have to do this on my real time, I'm going to like, okay, let's go ahead and upgrade this. I'm sure <laughs> the computer I'm about to inherit has all the bells and whistles and programs. But so we did, I'm sorry, we did have one more card game, which okay, I was good. very proud of. And this was actually Mo's idea, and it was called Punishment Deck. And what it was is it wasn't a game in, unto itself. It was a game that you, uh, or it was a, a, basically, you could use it as like truth or dare, like for the dares, but it was essentially like the punishment of if you lose this round, then you got to pull a card out of the deck and do this thing. And so some of them, uh, I think some, one of my favorite was uh, Mystery Squirt, where you had to close your eyes and someone in there got to go into the fridge and pull something out and squirt it into your mouth. <laughs> you didn't get to know what it was uh one was eat a eat a full sheet of toilet paper you know these these kind of things things that were relatively <laughs> family friendly but <laughs> that you could do with stuff that was already in your house but uh we 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 had it was brilliant and we we were pushing it and then a year later 
another company came out with the exact same game. And I have no, no idea if they saw ours on camera, because I, I mean, on camera, on the Game Crafter, because I do know that happens. Like they'll go to the Game Crafter, which is independently published games, take that idea and then build something else. Uh, and then like, they'll have money, Kickstarter or whatever, and make it bigger and better. And, and uh, in fact, that's happened uh, quite recently, but I'm not going to get into that with, with another friend of mine. Uh, but uh, I don't, yeah, I can't say for sure that they stole our idea, but it I was still get ex- saucy about people stealing memes without crediting. So I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> it's the exact same game. So we kind of stopped pushing it because theirs looked way better than ours. And uh, yeah, they were on national TV talking about it. And so, well, all right. Bye. I designed a shirt for a summer camp like in 2005 and then i saw a maybe it wasn't lifeway but it was a large christian corporation Mm. pushing the exact shirt i designed like literally looks like they just took my shirt and you drew it themselves and i don't even know that they did that i think they just like (laughs) took my shirt and said here copy this but like (laughs) we're like we were like a small bible camp and in the woods in North Carolina, I'm like, I can't fight you, so I'm just gonna go. Right. Yeah. Um, you, just, you just know, and then no, there's just there's no way, there's no way I'll be able to beat this here. So you've had a thriving online presence of humor, by and large. Um, yeah. You've had a, you know, uh, your hand in the board game world. You've created a radio station, not just because you hate K Love, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but because you actually wanted to create that, um, dude, I think that's a lot, like, especially for that, not to be your like full-time world. Yeah. That, that's a lot of input into the, the world there. You know, dude, radio is, uh, radio is in my blood. Honestly, I'm a third generation radio guy and you know, I'm most, most, uh, legitimate radio people wouldn't consider me a legitimate radio guy. Cause it's an online radio station, but my uh, grandfather and my dad have both been station managers. Uh, I've worked in the radio industry uh, since I was a teenager. I've done literally every job uh, there is to do in a radio station. So, I mean, I've been, I've been pursuing something like this for a long time. So when I say that I'd love to do this the rest of my life, it's, it's not just because, Hey, I stumbled upon this really cool thing, but I mean, it's, it's, it's really been my dream since a kid. Like I, I love music. I love the, the, uh, the room, the romantic side of radio. Just, you know, it's, it's almost with Spotify and everything else out there where you can just pick whatever you want to listen to immediately on, in on demand. It's, it's almost a bit too sterile for me. Like radio is a, is a art form, you know, it's, it's where, where you trust someone else to, bring you into a new world you know it's 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 a place to discover artists completely outside of your your mindset completely outside of what you would consider uh your area of expertise and you know find some some you know be transported somewhere else by by another amazing artist you've never even heard of and you know that's kind of my goal like i'm not hating on spotify at all i think in fact that you know, Love Thy Nerd Radio, LTN Radio can go hand in hand with, you know, people using Spotify. It's just, look, you want to find something new? Come listen to us for a little while, discover someone new, and then go check out all that they've ever done over on Spotify. You know, it's a, it can be a balancing act, you know, and uh, both beneficial for each other. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's been in my soul for a long, long time. So even if I never get paid for it, I'd like to keep doing it. (laughs) So, you know, as you've mentioned, like when, when I discovered you and what you're doing, it was back row radio. And then less than a year ago, huh? And you helped out too, man. You created (laughs) content for us. It was awesome. It was a pleasure. Still do. (laughs) Yay. I got to do that as soon as we stop this. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I hope he doesn't mind if it's late because it's, I'm hanging out with him. Um, But like uh it was back row radio and then within it wasn't within the last year right it was like october october yeah this past october is when we finally we've been working on it since june june i think okay um but yeah october was the launch because we wanted to coincide with 
LT and Con, which was originally going to be in person, yeah, in person, but became an online thing. So uh, in October, like you made the announcement and everything that Back Row Radio was becoming LTN Radio. So just tell, tell us about that transition, like what that is, what that means, what's different other than the name. So like, with, with Back Row Radio, um, you know, as you know, as I said, we, we had so many different back row things going on back then when we first started. Uh, and as we went on, more and more of our focus was just around the radio station. And so, you know, we kind of stopped making games. We kind of, we stopped the, the Twitter account. We stopped uh, the blog. We stopped all these other things because we were focusing on the radio station, the show, and by extension, just the Facebook group community because that was a part of the show's community. Uh, and as we went on and on, the idea of what the the ministry's purpose behind Back Row Radio was, was kind of getting lost in the name. Because Back Row Radio doesn't make any sense to anybody walking in off the street. You know, it doesn't, you know, someone who's never heard it before, well, why are they called this? And we didn't explain it. <laughs> there was we didn't have a, a you know a promo going every day. Oh, here's why we this is our name, by the way. You know, just it, it started bugging me because it seemed like we didn't have a focus beyond just play good music. You know, we wanted a ministry focus. And uh, I've been in love with the idea of Love Thy Nerd as a ministry for uh ever. <laughs> Bubba came down, I think, the uh the first few months of Love Thy Nerds launch back in 2018, whenever it was, it was Somewhere like February or something. 20, yeah, I think it was February of 2018, uh, February. So I think he came down in like March or April uh, for the podcast, for the Back Row Baptist podcast, long before we did the radio station. And uh, he, we did a joint podcast of Free Play and Back Row Baptist podcast because that's their main one over on Love Thy Nerd, or it was their main one at the time. Uh, and so he shared with me the vision behind it and what they were hoping to do and, and, you know, the ministry. And I'm just like, this is the dopest thing I've ever heard of. How can I kind of be a part of it? And so initially the, the first, the first bit of connection was you. We had you come on and, uh, currently what you do for us is faith and fandom 180, which is essentially just kind of like similar to your book, right? It's, it's very similar to how you write your chapters in your book, just condensed into just like a real condensed. Thing. Yeah. Dude, um, look, on that note, like I've been in the process of posting all of the chapters from the books individually to our website, your new website. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I freaking write too much. <laughs> like, cause I haven't looked at these things in one can as one conglomerate ever. Yeah. And like, book four is our biggest book and like i sat down like my family was watching something i've seen before so i'm just sitting on the corner of the couch like copy paste format copy i'm like i hate all of this <laughs> and i'm like i literally just looked at it and i'm like how do you people read all this mess and like <laughs> but i was That's like that, i'm like oh gross i hate all <laughs> it. i hate everything but i hate everything when it's in the middle of it but <laughs> but yeah so we reached out to 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 you and them uh and uh we're like we want to make a love thy nerd specific short just something that played through and so we created love thy nerds critical hit with hector mirai and uh you came and did these cool little three minute things for us and we had a Friday morning show that was produced by another group, another, another couple of dudes that we didn't really know personally, but they had been doing a podcast for a while. It was very entertaining. Like, this sounds like a morning show. So they were doing our, our Friday morning show, but eventually one of them got engaged and the other one was moving away. And they're like, you know what? We can't do this weekly anymore. And so I reached out to Bubba. I said, can I just like steal free play and I'll chop it up and make it into like a morning show for our Fridays while we try and find someone else. He said, dude, if we're going to do a, a morning show, why don't we just do a morning show? And so they came up with church nerds, uh, which is, it was an exclusive back row radio uh, morning show with Bubba and Anna Stalka. And uh, so now we had like two things going that were love thy nerd content. Um, and as we got, as I got more and more bugged by the idea of 
I don't have a purpose. We don't have a focus. We need something to focus. I'm just like, it would be really cool if we could just go all in. And so I just called up Bubba. I'm like, hey, let me pitch something to you. And if you hate it, just say, eh, pass, and I'll never bring it up again. And uh, I laid out what I wanted, and he was really cool about it. He, he loved the idea, but he was really worried about me because he's like, back row, that name has been your baby for nearly a decade. And we don't want to just, we wouldn't want to just come in and, and erase that. So you need to really pray and be sure that that's the direction that you want to go before we go any further. So, you know, I, I really focused, I really prayed about the idea, but uh, uh, all signs pointed to yes. And so we preserved it by changing our morning show name back to the back row morning show. And so that's still what it is on LTN radio. So we still have that connection to what Mo and I have been doing for the last several years. Um, but we couldn't be more all in with love thy nerd, but the station did change just a bit. The music's still the same. We still, you know, still have mostly just Christian rock, rap, pop, and indie, you know, most of our day, but, uh, a lot more content. We have morning shows and afternoon shows. We have a Sunday like message, which you've done a couple of for us. We've done, we've done uh, special music blocks. Now we have an eighties night, which completely breaks the format. Cause it's not even just Christian it's like best eighties music uh, of all time that we play for an hour on throwback Thursdays. We have a reggae hour on Tuesday nights, which was <laughs> Matt Warmbier and Bubba Stalkup's uh, baby. Uh, but I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's fun because we can do whatever we want. But, again, but now we have a more of a, a focus. We have a more focused uh, ministry. Um, we have a more, uh, even a more focused like listenership. And I was worried that, you know, we drop listeners, that we'd lose listeners, that our numbers would go down. Our numbers have tripled. We, we have three times as many people listening for three times the amount of time uh, each month, which like, you know, with, with the service that we use, we pay by total hours listened. And uh, once we get to a certain point, we have to pay more, jump up a tier in order to cover the uh, licensing costs because licensing is stupid in this country, the way they do it. <laughs> but uh, we've never, I'd never gotten anywhere close, not even halfway to that prior to this chump, this jump to LTN radio. And we're, we're getting there. I'd say within a year, we're going to have to jump to the next level. So I couldn't be more happy with how it's gone. Uh, I couldn't be, I'm sorry. I'm realizing I'm looking at you and not looking at the camera. I've looked uh, <laughs> at you the whole time. So I mean, it's like legit. Cause I'm looking at your face and then like, I had a, like a warning saying flash was expired, go away. And I'm like, I'm like, Oh gosh, what just happened? Um, but uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's gone great. And uh, it's, it was a, it was a lot easier of a transition than I thought. The hardest transition has just been the amount of work that I have to do behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I know like the podcasters have had a hard time readjusting because they're having to make now, you know, all the podcasts kind of have to be in three segments. Uh, so we can fit in on air, a music break. And then on the podcast, we fit in some of our shorts that we make because we have uh six or seven different shorts that we make each week and uh you know so a, a break in the discussion a little bit more defined thing and so i know that they've they, they're still kind of working on that and working out the kinks uh but you know it's a learning curve for all of us but i think overall it's going really well and it can only get better from here in my opinion well i think you had, you, know, you had told me in advance a little bit that it was happening and like I'm all for teamwork and I'm all for, you know, us working together. But like my first honest thought, like, you know, just like for your one, I was concerned about your well being because I'm like, <laughs> that, that, I'm like, that's super ambitious, homie. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm I like, remember that. I'm like, you're going to die. Um, <laughs> but I, I was concerned for you, but like, and then like on a, on a, I'm not going to say it's fleshly, but it's more just analytical. Um, on an analytical level, I'm like, on a real level, you have currently, I think we just hit 3,000 members or 3,000 people in the LTN community. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
you had, you know, 8,000 plus in the back row community when you, when you guys made that shift. And I'm like, it felt weird to see you take a, a bigger, it felt like a bigger brand name. Yeah. Uh, like downshifting down to what by just numbers sake. Um, Cause obviously I believe in LTN and the ministry that it does. And I've been, I've been a day one, you know, ride or die person for that. You know, <laughs> I, f- I followed the record from game church. I'm here. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, it's one of those things of like, it just felt weird to see you voluntarily like almost, it felt like a humbling thing to me that you were willing sure. to, you know, put your own brand backwards for the, you know, for the greater good of that sense. Yeah. And I remember that conversation we had. Um, and, you know, honestly, I think I said this to you then, I just, I feel like back row served its purpose and, uh, and it, it did what it needed to do and it kind of ran out of what it needed to do. And if I had ever wanted to, to jump to a new ministry, that was the one. And there was no better time. I mean, God, God paved the way pretty easily. Everybody, everybody, uh, all the, all the, the higher ups, the, the founders over there at LTN were, were all on board. Some of them were like, okay, I don't know what this means, but whatever. Sure. Let's do it. Sounds good. Uh, but, but a lot of them were like, oh, that's awesome. What? We're going to have a radio station. That's dope. And so I'm like, yeah, it's been, it's been confirmed to me multiple, multiple times, uh, that this was the route that God wanted us to take. And, and, uh, it's only been beneficial so far. You know, I haven't seen any downside backlash anything else nobody uh nobody in the our yes we, we we brought a lot of listeners with us in fact we got a lot of people that have been listening since the start of the podcast back in 2016 have been riding with us all the way till now uh and none of them are like boo this sucks <laughs> go back to the way it was there's like what more stuff this is cool a lot of them have been joining uh the like the love diner discord and getting more involved with all these other nerdy pursuits like and i, I feel think... so old i feel so old because i suck at discord like, <laughs> i i look at discord like you know an elderly person in 1990 with looking at a smartphone and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> I felt that way. I felt that way at first. In fact, it was just today. Uh, my, you know, because we have COVID, we've been working from home and my, we only have the one laptop. So for about five hours a day, my wife has to log into her desk uh, at her work. And so I'm sitting here just goofing around on my phone and I'm on discord. I'm like, I've been on discord for an hour. Like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it was like, click, Hey, this is a thing now. This is cool. I don't even want to go to Facebook right now. I had straight up anxiety <laughs> trying to navigate around Discord at uh, it's, it's, LTN Con. Online. Yeah, it's it's terrifying at first. <laughs> that was my first. That was my first connection to it too. Is LTN Con, uh, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I well, I had never even been on Twitch at that point, so that was my first time on Twitch and on Discord for LTN. I've, I've still not. I've still not twitched. <laughs> like um, I twitch, but not. Online. Not that way. <laughs> <laughs> Just my left eye with stress. But no, like, I, I think, love Twitch and, and Discord now. Those, these are my favorite things. I think even pre LTN, Bubba had done a podcast with me where with Discord. And this would have been, you know, like 2016, 2017. And I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, it's like, I, I like to find the little things I know how to do. Yeah. And stay there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's cool. Cause uh, you know, I've gotten to, uh, we got to do a live morning show for, it was like our Christmas morning show uh, on the love that nerd Twitch channel, which was really fun. It's fun to interact with people as they're chatting and, and, you know, going about, about watching along with you. The moment I got to do a live like two hour thing where we ended with the one chip challenge, which was <laughs> brutal. Uh, but it was, it was a blast. And that gave me like the bug, dude, for Twitch. And so I've weaseled my way into, uh, I get to host Tuesday nights for Love Thy Nerds games, you know, that they air most nights of the week. I get to do Tuesday nights now and I get to lead an Among Us game every Tuesday night with Discord's voice chat uh, as the the option. So, I mean, it's fun as all heck. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. So and that's about as gaming as I get, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's the thing, like... 
I'm not saying I'm antisocial, but like I've realized I'm an I'm only an extrovert with a platform. Mm. Like, <laughs> if I can be a, a absolute extrovert as long as I've got something to hide behind, whether it's a microphone or a table, a booth, a podium, whatever. I, as long, give me something to hide behind. I'm great. Just yeah. put me in a room of people. I'm the most awkward Sam and human when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah. so like, I've not gotten into that with gaming. Like um, even like with games like destiny two or halo mm-hmm. or call of duty. And I'm not that much of a fan of a call of duty. Um, but like I played a lot of destiny and even with destiny, I'm like, I don't like to talk. I'm just like, yeah. And no, oh, dude, I'm pew, the pew, same pew, way. Pew, pew. In fact, before among us came out, the last game that I actually wanted to play multiplayer more of the time, aside from Mario Kart, because I don't really count that, because Mario Kart, everybody loves Mario Kart. But the last game that I really wanted to play multiplayer was Goldeneye, dude, on the N64. I, I, am, I am king solo gamer. I don't want to talk to anybody, don't want to do anything else, don't want to run a campaign with you, co-op, nothing. But uh, Among Us, for some reason, has just sparked this love in me, man. I am, I am all in. On I, I'm burnt out <laughs> on it um, just because uh, when it first dropped, really dropped, my youth group m- was meeting, you know, somewhere, I don't know, middle of the, the towards, the, I guess, October, November, somewhere in there, um, I took over doing youth pastor duties at my church. Mm. So now I'm about to have that and and media director uh, and media director <laughs> i don't like life um, if it helps dude i'm also the janitor at my church so i saw you making too. jokes about yeah. that back in the day and i'm like oh for real homie um but uh so there's a guy that's over games you know one of our volunteers and he's a freaking awesome human um he's like the the wildlife person what do you call him the um He's like the cop for wildlife, for fishermen and stuff. Ranger? Game warden? Game warden. He's the game <laughs> warden. Just, okay, gotcha. So he's the game Power warden. Ranger? Yeah, Ranger? it's something in there. He's the game warden for our area. And, um, you know, so he moves like a cop the whole time and everything. Um, but, you know, I said, come up with a game for this month's whatever. He's like, bro, I got it. We're doing live action Among Us. Mm. And I'm like, okay. And so they did it like everybody had tasks to do and they used the whole church building. And then you'd hear some kids scream, dead, dead body, dead body. And like, they'd all come to the emergency meetings and stuff. I was like, that's cool. That's cool. And I was like, you know, what's for next week? And he's like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to do that again. I'm like, okay, dude, we did live action <laughs> among us every Sunday from like October to January. <laughs> and i'm like please stop <laughs> please and i was like and i told him i was like hey homie let's uh let's get a um let's get a good christmas game for like the last couple you know sundays of the year he's like christmas among us we'll use candy canes <laughs> and so like i bought among us when it came for the switch uh because my my t- my two oldest daughters are in youth group and yeah. so i was like look i'm gonna buy among us don't ask me to play <laughs> it's like i'm done with it um so to ask you this um you've obviously had a big year like year to date in terms of getting ltn radio to where it is mm-hmm. um do you have any big future plans for it you know that's uh that's an ever-changing mm-hmm. answer uh right now I mean, when it comes to something mapped out, no. Uh, we we, we kind of are seeing this right now as an experimental year uh, with it. Uh, we're we're going to evaluate come probably uh, September or so uh, how it went, if we want to continue on with this, if it, if it needs to change in some form or fashion. So far, it's been going great, but we don't know what that translates into moving forward other than the fact that it's got to work hand in hand with the podcast network, uh, which is looking into, you know, creating a bunch of new shows, not just like constant shows. Some, some are going to be like 
you know, eight week mini series type shows that happen a couple times a year, but they're, they're, they have a lot of plans for that. And that kind of ties into what our plans are for the radio station. And that's the balancing act that's been difficult. Um, and I honestly just, I don't really know where it goes from here, uh, which is probably bad. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some steps that are bigger than others and you just need to pay attention to that one step for a while yeah but yeah i mean i just i honestly didn't expect it to go this well from launch uh i thought it would take a lot more convincing for the community the ltn community and for the people that we were already having as you know active listeners of hey this is a good idea and uh, keep listening or start listening. I thought it would be a, a more difficult road. And to see that, that you know, uh, 300% jump uh, in listeners and listeners and, you know, total hours listened as well, we were all kind of blown away by that. And I guess what I'm saying is the radio station has never been this successful. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, do I mess with things, <laughs> or do I leave it how it is for now? Um, and you know, there's there's only so much a radio station can do. Um, yeah, I just yeah, I don't have a good answer for that right now. Uh, and- hopefully, I'll, I'll get a little bit more clarity as as uh, all of LTN kind of meshes together. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely definitely seems to be something that's going to be kept around for a while and. Uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be uh we we want to be the soundtrack for all of our nerds. You know, we we want to be something that is a part of your daily life. And so to have our content on there, most of it like originally starting on there before it goes to their their podcast feeds uh is a cool feature uh cuz you get to be you know, in the know beforehand, but to also yeah. tie in with other events, uh, we're, we're, we're thinking of trying to do some things for the next LTN con, maybe that's specific to the radio station at certain points, like before or after the main, uh, like on air or main live, whatever they decide to do next year, uh, bits, you know, we have something that's exclusive to the radio station. You know, there's, there's a bunch of different little ideas that we've had, um, but for now, I think it's just keep doing what we're doing, and uh, when we get I, when we get uh, requests for new things, yeah, see where it goes, see how much uh, how much enthusiasm is behind that. But yeah, we're we're open, I guess. We're we're doing we're doing uh, what I think we're supposed to be doing, and we're open to whatever God wants to do with it in the future. And that's the only place we can be right now. <laughs> so ask you this, how much does it cost to maintain what you're doing at dude, the radio level? Dude, you'd be surprised. Uh, right now, the hosting of everything, the scheduling, the running it, the, the always on air, uh, the licensing, all that is like 70 bucks. <laughs> it's <laughs> the the rest the rest of the costs is is just uh like purchasing the music to air which you know you you get you can get music a little bit cheaper as a radio station as opposed to you know buying it on iTunes or whatever uh well, iTunes doesn't exist anymore but anyway you can it <laughs> no it's apple music now right didn't they get rid of iTunes altogether oh, dude i have no i don't, I don't <laughs> mess with them pretty sure they did but uh anyway yeah it's just you know that and so you know i i budget how much i'm going to use in that but but uh it's really you know i'd say less than 100 bucks a month for most months uh it's it's really not that much Uh, i remember because i remember asking my wife about it i remember when we were first going to launch i'm like this is what i really i really want to do and i know we don't have the money for it and so you tell me what you're willing to do (laughs) and she said you're right. We don't have the money for it. So you need to get people to financially back this. And if you can get like 80% of the funding, then you can do it. In two weeks, we were well over fully funded with supporters. And so uh, works for me and we did it. So I've, I've not had to pay really much at all out of my own pocket ever. 
for the radio station, which is dope. And so I usually do like what I've done instead of that is I'll pay out of my own pocket to make stickers or other merch to, to give out and do kind of uh, advertisement that way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not that much at all. Like anybody could do it. It just takes a lot of time. It takes a heck of a lot of time, but uh, yeah, I mean, you could start one right now. Faith and Fandom Radio, nope. right now. No, nope. <laughs> uh, I, I, this is the official dubbing of <laughs> all Faith and Fandom Radio goes directly to <laughs> LTN Radio because nah, fam. Um, I, I'm good. My I'm expended. I'm good. <laughs> uh, Shaq has his own radio station using the same company and format that we use by the way just so you know so i find that i find that amazing that is amazing (laughs) i uh i got tapped um the same week that 180 launched um i got tapped the same week that 180 launched by my local newspaper to start putting to writing a full devotional uh for our local newspaper that churches could adapt into their own Sunday school material if they wanted. Really? Yeah. Um, the newspaper was doing this? The newspaper. And, it, and it's wow. the, like the main the new, newspaper from our region. And they're like, we want to put it out on Friday. So if churches want to use it for Sunday school material, they can. I'm like, okay. Hmm. And um, like I was burning my bridges, just taking on too much stuff. But I was like, man, that sounds like too good of a ministry opportunity not to do. And yeah. um. So somewhere in there, um, I'd say probably by December of doing that, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to use whatever I do on um, Faith and Fandom 180 and just <laughs> take out the nerd content. And um, so like for the last for the last however long, I've just been like, whatever I do for Faith and Fandom 180. Whatever, whatever the lesson is. Just what that is. I, I'm going to take that out and make it as non, I'm going to try and make it as muggle-fied as possible so that uh, we can do that. Um, so just to ask you this before we get out of here. How can we pray for you? Um, well, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of stress with this because essentially with not, not, not just specifically with the radio, but I essentially do four part-time jobs, two of which I get paid for, two of which I do not. Uh, and one of those not paid for takes up a lot of my time. So to, to not stress out and to be willing to delegate things probably is something that needs to be prayed over for me. Um, but uh, the other thing, and, and I didn't want to touch on this too heavily, um, but I do want to make mention of it. The, the other, the fourth one, because I told you I'm media director, I'm janitor, radio station manager. The other thing I do is I actually lead uh, a chapter of a, of a worldwide ministry at, in my community called Celebrate Recovery. Mm. Uh, and it's a faith-based 12-step program for pretty much everything that you could struggle with. Um, so it's not just like drugs and alcohol, but it's, it's, uh, overeating, pornography, overspending, uh, gossip, <laughs> you know, anything, anything that you do habitually that you need to get over. Cause essentially that addiction works the same way in the brain for everybody. Uh, and so these 12 steps, you know, are, uh, you know, they work. Uh, they're biblically based. They always have been, even when AA started. Uh, and they work well. And that ministry is is where where uh, the other half of my heart is, um, because we're we're not a big church, but we uh, we were like a secondary CR that started in our town, and there was a big church that had a CR, and that was the main one. And then they stopped, and so we became the big one. And so we have CRs that have just as many or more people than we typically have on a Sunday uh, every week. And I have, and I run those. I run, it's a full service plus the small groups and stuff like that. And so I want, if you could pray for me in any way, it would be to, to keep that fire for this ministry because if I'm about to burn out on anything, it's that. Uh, I've been struggling, and, and I know you've you've even mentioned this. I think in our last uh, in your last Faith and Phantom 180, I've been struggling with my weight for years, and 
the thing that's killing me is that I feel like a failure as a leader with CR. You know what I mean? Because overeating is an addiction. It's something that I've dealt with for my entire life, something I learned from my parents. And though that's not what brought me to CR, my whole testimony is online if you ever want to search it out. But, uh, and I found freedom from that. You know, I'm over 10 years clean from, from what brought me into CR. But this overeating thing has been this, this, this crutch for a long, long time. And pre-COVID, like October of last year, or I'm sorry, 2019, I actually finally started making progress. I lost between there and I want to say June of 2020, I lost 97 pounds of the 200 that I need to lose. Almost halfway there. But then the, the overwhelming stress and depression that just hit us all, you know, as a world at that point brought all my, my uh, progress to a halt and then reversed it. And I gained every single one of those pounds back. Oh, bro, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, um, just, it's devastating. It really is to have gotten so far further than I've ever gotten. And then just to not be able to hold on to it at all. Uh, and so the thing that I'm struggling right now is just, you know, I, I don't feel worthy enough to lead this group because I can't even get my own crap together at all. Uh, and I know that's not the right biblical mindset to keep with this stuff, no, no, but. but you know, that's the thing that I guess that's what I have a lot of people pray with me for is both the, the need to keep going and to trust God in the process and to keep working the process that I know works because he's delivered me from something else by using this process. Uh, but also to not let that taint my desire to actually be a, a mentor and a help and a sponsor to people through this ministry. Uh, and for all those, because what's going on with me is going on with every single person in a recovery group right now. This whole last year has been the worst year for mental health mm -hmm. and for addictions. And uh, that's, that's where my heart breaks. You know, that's, that's what, that's what my heart's breaking for, not just for my own struggle, but for, for so many people I've, there's been so many people that have stopped coming that have fallen away that I know, you know, weren't at a place to stop coming, you know, and it's, it's a tough, it's a tough gambit right now. It's just a tough, tough racket to, to be in uh, and, and keep, uh, and keep, keep being positive. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough pushing this recovery stuff when nobody wants to be recovered right now. Everybody wants to go back into their addiction to just survive mentally. And ultimately that's the worst thing that we could do. And uh, now my prayer would be, yeah, my request would be <laughs> with me. Let me put it, let's succinct it here that uh, I can get my crap together and stop getting in my own head and letting this depression and stuff uh, ruin my progress and, and basically my trusting in God and that I can in turn use that to help inspire the other other folks in my program in the city to keep fighting that same path so that's what i would ask for <laughs> i i know that i know that uh uh spiritual testicular kick of um making that progress and losing it mm -hmm. um i've i've been there um somewhere around yeah, 2006 there was this guy that uh i was a missionary and um for a bible camp and he was one of my biggest supporters and he's like hey come here let me talk to you and he's like for the good of your family good of your wife you know i didn't have kids yet he's like good of your future children and all these things he's like um i need you to do better and he didn't sound like a douche when he said it and, and all these <laughs> things it was it was genuinely loving yeah and um he's like look man Walk 4,000, he's like, uh, walk four miles a day, a little over 10,000 steps. Don't drink any calories, don't eat anything fried, and don't eat anything dairy. And just do that for me, for whatever. And I'm like, and I was like, I, I have dad issues. I had like hardcore dad abandonment. So to have mm -hmm. like a, a positive male figure, like grab me by the shoulder, I'm like, ah, like snotty tears and everything. <laughs> and um, like, so I jumped into that and 
I was just past newlywed. So like maybe first two years of marriage and the first couple of years of marriage are hard. And yeah. um, it's that whole learning who you are thing. And um, I think I straight up used physical fitness as like, okay, I can run from having to deal with this. And mm. I went ham. I walked four miles a day and then went to the gym and consumed 1500 calories a day. And dude, I lost 170 pounds in a year. Wow. Um, I was, when I started, I'm bigger than I am now, but I got down to 165. Um, and I legit look like Francis Chan's nerdcore brother. And, (laughs) and, you know, it, it was, it was one of those things of like, I, that became my, I, t- I put more faith and credibility in the fact that I got small mm. than the fact that I was serving Jesus or that mm. I was, you know, becoming a father. Like I hate sharing newborn pictures of my oldest daughter because in my newborn pictures of my oldest daughter, I look like Francis Chan. Mm. And it's just like, yeah, let's just bypass the kid number three <laughs> when I'm back. <laughs> but um, I had a, a horrible life experience pop up. It wasn't a pandemic, but like uh, my middle child um, almost died after mm. three days. And uh, we spent three weeks of touch and go. Like she could go at any moment. Oh, like gosh. one of those things where I never left a hospital room for yeah. three weeks and um, I, I don't know if y'all, I don't think y'all have them in New Mexico, but we, there's this restaurant called Cookout. Um, mm. it's, it's a Southern thing. They put Bible verses on their cups. I mean, it's, it's that kind of Southern. And, um, but they have 32 milkshake flavors they mix together. Um, and a combo is $5. And the combo sides, you get two sides per combo. And the combo sides include chicken nuggets, chicken quesadilla, a bacon wrap. <laughs> um, those are sides. <laughs> You can get a corn dog as a side. Um, and so cookout opened the same week that my baby, do- my baby almost died. And so people's like comfort things like here, have this milkshake. <laughs> have this, this. So I spent three weeks of that. And like, I legit came out of there and I'm like, I just like my soul had been crushed. I was like, I don't have any, I don't have any desire to do any of this. And that literally started like, I, I was a hundred and I, I was like, rail thin for like two and a half years and then that started that and i gained all of it back and Mm. to go from 4x to medium to 4x ish Mm. (laughs) again it's just like okay i'm worthless (laughs) yeah Um, dude no i get it yeah but you know i just encourage you to and just in that the fact that we struggle doesn't make us less worthy of guiding others that struggle. It just means that we know we still need to have work to do. Oh yeah. And you're absolutely right. And, and I've been told that, you know, multiple times by people that have been doing this for years, it's just, it's your, it's the stupid nagging thing in your brain. It's just like, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve to lead a ministry. You suck. You know, I just can't get that out of your head sometimes. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what I have to fight, and that's I guess that's something I've fought my whole life. You know, it's uh, clinical depressions running my family, and so oh, yeah. I know my mom. My mom just has never felt worthy of anything, love anything, uh, her whole life, and I've really wanted to not, you know, be that way, <laughs> and so I've been fighting that, and I've been good. It's I was doing really good until COVID, man. I was doing so good, and that's that the thing, COVID. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've, I got to the place where I was happy just being my, my thick self Mm because I'm healthy. My doctor said, you have the best cholesterol of anybody I've had in my office. Oh, dude, that's how I've been my whole life too. And that was my (laughs) excuse for not ever trying. Like every time I go to the doctor, well, well, you're overweight, but, uh, I mean, everything's fine. So it's, <laughs> so it's like, well, I don't need to do anything. It's like, right, I'm sick, yeah. but I'm healthy. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm not, no, I didn't mean to say hefty. I said healthy, but there you go. Um, hefty and healthy. That's hefty and healthy. Have. That's my new podcast. <laughs> um, coming to LTN radio at 2 a.m. on Friday. Bring your ice cream. Um, <laughs> but uh, I had to do that too with just during COVID because, and I, I know I've, I've shared this before, but like, 
2019 was on paper the biggest success year of my life. Mm. Um, I won a 40 under 40 award for community leaders in North Carolina. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I, um, I, had, that. I had that. I got to be a guest at San Diego. Um, and it was just like, I, I had so many good things happen in mm-hmm. 2019 and then 2020 was what 2020 was. And like, and I started like, you know, I traveled more in 2019 than I've ever traveled. And I had all these big plans for 2020. And then I have three daughters and all of the schools shut down in March and never reopened. Mm. Still haven't reopened. Um, I am six weeks away from one year of homeschooling for a year yeah. when I wasn't planning on it. Yeah. And um, I started to balloon so bad. Uh with my weight just going up and so i had to start like uh just not to lose weight but just not to gain more i had to start intermittent fasting Mm. um yeah and that that's that's one of the main things that helped me last year yeah and so just eating from 12 to 8 and not Mm. eating past that has been huge and then um our church does this thing every january we start off the year with uh prayer and fasting Mm. and um if you're on, you know, we encourage the whole church, but if you're on staff, you're required. Really? Yeah. That's bold. Oh, no, no, no. You don't know how bold. My first year, which was about six years ago, um, like our leadership's changed hands a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, our fir- my first year, dude, um, the pastoral staff, which included me, uh, was required to do a week of just water. A week? Of just water. Holy moly. And um, so that was my first year on staff. I'd been on staff for five months and they required a week of just water and I made it. But my wife said, never again. (laughs) She's like, you were the absolute worst. I almost left you. (laughs) My wife was like, I could not take you doing that ever again. So you either need to quit this church or never do that again because our marriage won't survive it. And, um, and, But, you know, so I've learned my lesson. I don't try and do a week of water. Like other people on my team still do. I'm like, screw you guys. (laughs) I'm like, I don't care. That doesn't bring me close to Jesus. That like, that weakens my faith. Um, And, but, you know, I just did a week of, I did three weeks of um, Daniel fast and intermittent fasting. Mm. So just vegetables and water and only from 12 to eight. And, you know, I started losing weight and I'm like, yay. Oh wait, that's not what I'm doing this for. Crap. (laughs) And it's like, you know, our, our fast ended on Sunday and my wife started cooking normal food again. I'm like, Oh no, (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to gain it. Oh wait, stop. (laughs) (laughs) That was was the thing. I was like, I was like, do I really just want to eat more carrots or am I going to take this cheesy pasta and be happy? Oh Um, gosh, pasta dude. But, um, just, you know, the super rabbit trail, but it's good conversation. Um, Dude, I'll be praying for you, and I just want to, you know, I've told you, and I've mentioned it other places and everything else, but I genuinely appreciate your wisdom and your leadership and your ridiculous work ethic when it comes to serving in the ministry community, and um, I know you don't get paid for what you do, and I don't think anything, I, I don't think the LTN budget could even oh, collectively cover the amount of work you put into this. Oh um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and to be um, clear, I'm, I I agreed to this. So, I mean, this was my idea. Oh me. yeah, I was like, this was totally your sales pitch. And nobody, nobody's nobody's beating you to death to do this, but right. like, um, you put you put more work into this than a lot of people put into their you know actual paid positions. And mm. I appreciate that effort and I appreciate that hustle. And um, I'm grateful for all the the touches you are making across all these varying places and you know it's it's just weird like it's one of those things you don't know how much effectiveness you're doing and you know, i'm not going to do that pastor thing of give you credit for this where uh, i don't know that it's you but like um there's this girl that came to christ uh in my collegiate ministry because she found social club on an online radio station now, I don't know mm-hmm. that it was your station, um, sure. so I'm not going to say cool. that. It'd be, it'd be good for promos, but you know. Um, <laughs> 
but like she came to Christ because of social club and she got clean from drugs because of social club. And, oh, wow. And like, you know, I got to be part of her baptism and everything else. And it was just nuts because, you know, literally she stumbled across an online radio station that was playing social club and, you know, literally her whole life changed. She's one of the biggest leaders in one of our church campuses period. And it's nuts. And that's awesome. You know, that's yeah, one. That's, that's something I didn't really touch on, but yeah, I mean, that the, the feedback has been a big deal for, for the last three years is, is uh, we've, we've gotten a lot of people who have sent us me and Mo direct messages about, how much both you know the, the the shows but the the radio station itself has been such a big blessing to them and that's that's uh that's what we love to hear more than anything else is you know we we helped you whether you're a believer or not if we were able to put a little bit more encouragement and, and um one of the things and i'm sorry i'm gonna get on a quick tangent <laughs> Do you think, bro? and this is where uh, i start i can to always like split this into two episodes if i have to <laughs> <laughs> where i start to sound like i hate caleb again but caleb's <laughs> caleb's thing has always been positive encouraging caleb and uh there's i mean yeah yes you definitely want to be positive you definitely want to be encouraging but in my opinion for most of their content they take it too far out of reality they take it into christian movie territory where just everything is completely glossy and jesus and puppies and you know everything is easily wrapped up in 30 minutes and you know it's a, it's a thing where we take the grit and the reality out of life you know we play in f we play social club we play uh artists that talk about real honest rough struggles you know there's there's several tracks on our our radio station that i wouldn't want my little kids to listen to because it's real it's it's a legitimate thing about the struggles and they'd use the actual words it's not just some vague problem uh you know that a lot of k love songs talk about if it's ever if there's ever someone has a problem on a k love song it's just some vague thing of some you know, dark thorn in valley, my side. Yeah, storm. dark valley. <laughs> um, Shadow. Right. But you know, this 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 is real music. And to hear someone else struggling, I think that's why NF is so popular, because he doesn't whitewash anything. He wears his heart on his sleeve and it's his heart is full of a lot of crap that he has to get out. And that touches a lot of people who are struggling with that same stuff, thinking, oh gosh it's okay to be a Christian and struggle with this stuff. It's I know okay so many to be Christian. non-Christians that listen to NF and it Absolutely. weirds me out. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the, that's the, that's the biggest form of music ministry when you can pull in Christians and non-Christians and you don't even, you know, they don't even realize they're being implanted with religious ideas on how to respond to these things and how to rely on God and how to deny yourself and, and how to not push yourself up, but instead to push God up without it actually being just this, this, you know, hymn in disguise, this praise worship song in disguise, but about being a real response to this world and to God. And that's something that I think is lacking in a lot of Christian music in general but definitely in mainstream radio and another one of the reasons we want to keep doing this. And so, yeah, those, those kind of stories, there needs to be an outlet for it. Of course, there's, there's millions of people that have been encouraged by K love and, you know, the right song played at just the right time. You know, they air all those on, on the station all the time too, when people call in, but there's also a whole nother section of this community that need to hear it's okay to go through crap. It's okay to not be okay. God's still there. And Can you imagine how small the book of Psalms would be if we only played this stuff where David was happy? For real. For real. <laughs> and that's the best, yeah, that's the best explanation of that I you could have given right there. Exactly. There is a time for both the 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 mourning and the anger and releasing all that and the joy and the you know devotion. You know, those can go hand in hand. Uh I know we, we've, we've focused our music a little bit. We used to play like everything, like everything in the Christian genre when we first started. And one of my favorite uh, like reviews that was given on Twitter was like, 
this radio station just played Avalon followed by Disciple and it works. <laughs> and I'm like, that's great. <laughs> that's exactly what I, we've been saying this whole time. <laughs> Avalon, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, I just can't. Yeah, it's good. Point of Grace followed by uh, Red. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's no, there's no. Uh, Sandy Patty to Toby Nwigwe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're a little more focused, a little more uh not as jarring of switches between genres <laughs> anymore. But still that's that's been that's been the the calling, the ministry aspect of the radio station. Huh, <sighs> you know, can you tell that I've been stuck uh in a house for two weeks and not been able to talk to anybody <laughs> for a while except my own children? Because I will not shut up today, will I? I just ramble it's on. To, it's good. To, that's what we're here for. <laughs> and for the pe- for like the people that actually listen to this, they're they're here for that too. Um, hey, I do have one more prayer request. My wife yeah. is pregnant, and she just got in. She's just in her second trimester. So if you could just lift her up and that the, the baby is healthy and everything goes well, that'd Absolutely, be great, dude. Well, uh, man, we're, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here. And um, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, if people want to find the station, it's go, go ahead and give us all the, the linkies. Where, right. where did they find it? LTNonair.com. Uh, all the socials at LTN on air. And uh, on your phone, you can download an app called Live 365. And then just search and favorite LTN radio. And once you favorite it, it'll put that right at the beginning whenever you open the app. Uh, and then on your uh, uh, Echo devices, you can enable the LTN radio skill and then just ask Alexa to play Love Thy Nerd. And uh, it'll rock your house down. So if they want to give specifically to the radio station or you and your focus with this or anything, is there a way to do that? Yeah, um, they've been having the trouble getting us on the on the list of the specific LTN giving thing. So what you have to do is go to give.ltnonair.com, and that'll open Love Thy Nerds giving portal, but it'll specifically have LTN radio in the focus of what you're giving to. Um, and so, yeah, that's the way to give, uh, to donate to the radio station specifically, give.ltnonair.com. And uh, for y'all that are... Uh watching this on youtube or facebook the details of that will be posted in the uh comments and if you're listening to this on and just an audio platform uh you can go to faithandfandom.podbean.com and all the info will be there as well i uh, also just want to take a minute to say thank you to our patreon supporters for your awesome sauce and uh, for everybody that listens, uh, please share, like, rate, review, all those things. And thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Matt, seriously, dude, thank you for giving me your time. I know that I'm trying to get together, and I know it's the world's sucked and COVID and everything else, but <laughs> I'm grateful for you, man. I really am. Well, yeah, man, this feels like this was long overdue. I'm very, very honored to be on your show uh, and to do something more direct with you. So thank you very much for having me on. It's better than me just sending you an MP3 and then disappearing into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> just like a little, little devotional fairy. Just drop it in and I'm devotional off to work. <laughs> <laughs> that, that needs to be a sticker or a shirt. Let's do yeah. that. Devotional bay. <laughs> All right. Y'all, thanks so much. And we hope to see you soon.